yet another good corner to uh, you know to discuss and kind of and give an example of how areas developed to to meet the Zenite, to meet a need um, and really cover some of the most important aspects of life uh, like a church this was the first Church of Christ Scientists uh, when it was originally built and it was built uh, initially at, as a church in 1917 uh, it had a 1500 seat uh, worship area uh, and like so many buildings uh, eventually became uh, per it was purchased by Wayne State and was developed into actually one of the oldest graduate theater programs in the country. So in 1964, um, when, it, when the building was taken over by the university, uh, it became the Hillbury Theater. It was named after one of the first presidents of the university. It lasted for a long time as the Hillbury Theater. It was a 500 seat um, elliptical auditorium. Um, beautiful river inside, a great place to see a play. And then it also had at the lower level, it had sort of an experimental sort of undergraduate theater called the Studio Theater. Um, and that lasted until about five years ago, maybe four years ago, when it was decided mostly because, or, may, or largely because they got a huge chunk of money, uh, the university did, to convert this over to uh, another department of, of Fine and Performing Arts, but to build this building next door called the Hillbury Gateway. So the Hillbury Gateway is actually built, <laughs> that's built on the site of our former headquarters. So remember that how, well, I, I, we didn't talk too much about the house, but the house that was that was going to be demolished it used to sit right there, right next door to the church. And it was this, uh, it was this Queen Anne style house, um, you know, just a beautiful old wooden frame house. Uh, it was there for a long, long time. They literally picked it up, put it on rollers, moved it down the street. So it's now at Forest and Second. Um, they dug a big hole, sat it on the side for a while, got the foundation set up, set the house on top of it. I think they're still working on it though. You know, you're, you're trying to open it. Is it? Okay, great. That's great. I think it's completed. Okay. But the Hillbilly Gateway is a state-of-the-art theater venue, theater and music venue. Um, again, so all these plays that the Graduate Theater puts on, plus their music program, plus dance, uh, they have recording studios in the building. Uh, it was built, uh, I think the, the price tag was something like $45 million. Most of it was donated, however, by Gretchen Belay. If you don't know that name, that's okay, because I didn't either until recently. So Gretchen was actually the granddaughter of Hamilton Carhartt. That name might be familiar to you, so Carhartt Clothing. That Carhartt, perfect <laughs> yes, right? There you go. So uh, Carhartt's been producing that clothing for industry and others for over a hundred years. Made a bundle of money doing it. Gretchen, his granddaughter, uh, who eventually married Robert Blade, who was the CEO of Carhartt until he died. Well, until he retired. Um, Gretchen loved music. She loved predominantly jazz. And she was a huge supporter of Detroit's Jazz Festival, huge supporter of what is now the Aretha, which was called Shane Park for a long time. And she donated the money to build the Hilbert Gate. Um, just an extraordinary person, extraordinary patron of the arts. She just died in 2022. She was 97 years old and still going. Was so, her a Detroit company or did she just... a Detroit company originated here in Detroit. Yep. It's still privately owned, too. Still right? privately owned. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so here's a church uh, across the street, actually built a little earlier, was what is now called the Thompson Home. But it was called the Thompson Home for Old Ladies. So when this was originally built, David Thompson had said to his wife before he died, Look, when I die, I want you to do something worthwhile with the money. I want you to build something that serves the community. And so his wife, when he died, took the money and built, and the, the description of the house just cracks me up. So uh, it was not the most politi uh, politically correct phrase, but it was 1884 when the house was built. So it was built as a place where friendless old ladies could pass their remaining days in peace and comfort. Uh, 
this house was not designed by Albert Kahn. <laughs> this was designed by George Mason, who was actually a mentor of Kahn. He uh, was an architect as well. Uh, it was built uh, an estimated $330,000 when it was built. Um, it was built because there was no social security in the country. There was no widow's benefit. There was no pension uh, to speak of for women who died, and and husbands were the primary. Whose husbands were the primary breadwinner. If they had some resources, though, they had the opportunity to come live here at the Thompson home, and it was it was pretty luxurious. Um, when it was originally built, they all had private apartments. There was a dining service that you know an in-home kitchen that. that served the building. There was a solarium, so there were sunrooms off the back for gathering. Uh, eventually they had uh, an infirmary built to, to serve the residents. Only women, only widows. And it continued as a senior residence until actually the 1970s. And again, you know, the city was having its times and it, it really just couldn't be supported anymore. So, the university in the area saw an opportunity, bought another building bought this building, turned it into the School of Social Work. Um, it was the School of Social Work until, oh man, uh, I think it was, well, School of Social Work until, I didn't believe that it was this long until I saw it today, 2015. Mm -hmm. And so the house was again, uh, the building was again refurbished. It was actually used to be yellow, I think. It was like a ugly yellow. So it was repainted this rust red color uh, when it was redone. It, it was now, and so it's now, and so it's now housing for uh, fine performing arts students. And as we walk past it, I'm really glad to point out when we get there that there was an idea to tear off those sunrooms off the back. And when you see what they did with them, it's just a man. That's if I lived here and I could could have stretched out my undergraduate years further than I did, uh, I'd still be drinking coffee on this. Um, Got to talk about this building behind us. Um, it was, you know, necessity was the uh, necessity was the mother of building in this, in this instance. Um, the necessity wasn't, uh, wasn't a consensus, however, when this building was built in the late, late 1800s. The building was actually built in 1895. Um, it, is, it, is, it was a forerunning uh, uh, location of Central High School, Detroit Central High School. Oh, wow, okay. There were several locations of Central High School. This is one of the most prominent and one of the ones that has lasted. Um, but it was built when David McKenzie actually um, approached others to invest and have this building built. It was built not, it was built for uh, high school purposes, secondary education purposes. Excuse me, secondary education in the 1890s was not a popular idea. Didn't really become a prominent idea graduating from high school until World War II. But there was definitely a need. The population was growing. You know, kids uh, who were growing up in the city, uh, the, the belief was that, excuse us, the, the need was there to, to continue their education and have some sort of bridge between uh, younger years and more adult education. So um, uh, adult education classes were actually introduced and it became something of a city college as you got into the early 1900s and the early 19-teens and 20s. Um, the idea really caught fire. And so these uh, adult education courses really continued to expand. They were business courses and history courses and, and sociology courses. Um, and it expanded to such an extent that in the 1950s, it actually was chartered as Wayne University by the county. This, you know, and, and as Gary already said, the university was, was making its mark and taking things over and tearing buildings down and building more of their buildings in that central part of the camp was now central campus but old main was still in use as a school building when uh the university actually when the state actually chartered this or was, was pursued as a state university was when in the 1960s this, was, this eventually became wayne state university 
Um, again, still in use, still classrooms throughout. It also now houses the geology department, the archaeology department, the astronomy department. For a time, it actually housed the uh, dance department, which has since moved over into the Hillbury this morning. Um, it was a it was a school building when I was here. Yes, I was a Wayne State Tartar before they started calling them the Warriors. <laughs> um, I was here when it was a Tartar, uh, 1985 to, oh, 1990. I stuck around for a little bit. And um, it's, it, <laughs> I believe that it's still the building, even though it's been loved on and kept up and refurbished, uh, it still is hot in the winter and hot in the summer. <laughs> um, it still is heated uh, largely by steam heat. Um, it's still sprawling. When I would show up for class in classroom 80 on the north side of the building, my next class was in classroom 81. It was all the way on the other side of the building. I don't know why, but that was the design of the classroom. Um, but it has these really fantastic amenities, not just the styling of it and the dormers and the turrets. Um, the water fountains are poabic tile water fountains. There's all this tremendous, um, you know, plaster work again, and uh, skull and uh, sculpted uh, corners and things like that throughout the building. And again, it is still a very active school building for for Wayne State. And I don't think it's ever been anything in my history, anything other than Old Main. It's always been Old Main. It's like that's always going to be the cast corridor to me. I don't care what anybody says or anybody calls it. <laughs> I don't care if they try and rebrand it as Midtown. That's the cast corridor, and that's old name. Um, anyway, it's still a, uh, a really terrific structure. Um, during the, I think only during the active semesters, so like the winter and fall semesters, uh, they usually have a grad student um, in astrophysics who gives lectures on the areas, um, on the areas uh, constellations, because there's a, an active planetarium in the basement of the building. And so on Friday nights for free, as first come first serve, you can come down and see and hear a full on explanation by a, by a graduate astrophysicist of the Southeastern Sky of Michigan. It's pretty extraordinary. 